Okay. Yeah, sure. Whatever, man. I'm not big timing you. Okay, yeah, you want me to big time you? Listen up, you son of a bitch. Have you ever rapped so good that people passed out? Huh? Have you ever rapped so good, been putting words together so good that people lost consciousness? Yeah, yes. You remember that the gas leak at the roller rink 2006? Westlake? Yeah, I was rapping up there when all those people went unconscious. And you know how this dude is. It's, it's that hater mentality. Frenemies. Frenemies. They want to diminish your shine. Hey, diminishing my shine doesn't make yours glow brighter, pal. Okay? Yeah, people passed out. Oh, there was a gas leak, dude. Okay, wow. Uh, can you prove that they didn't pass out from my rapping? Oh, have I rapped and had people pass out since? No. But there have been gas leaks where people didn't pass out. So, you know, weigh it up, dude. Why don't you just give me my shine? Give me my credit. Like Friday Night Lights, bro. Give me my shine, you little son of a bitch. You like that? I'm using the sunglasses to be like poignant statements now. Hi, and that's big time, brother. Now you've been big time. Shut up. Hi, and welcome back to another edition. Now, I'm big time in you. I'm telling you to shut up. I'm doing both. Hi, and welcome back to another edition of Say There, Buddy. Suppose you did the thing you'd rather do. What would that thing be? Saturday. No post. No theme song yet. I, we're looking into the logistics, the legality of it, because uh, I don't really know what we're allowed to do. I'm not monetizing the stream thing. Like, I don't have enough views anyway, I don't think, to, to get anything off of it. But I'm not going to monetize it either way. It's more of a direct, like, sponsor thing. And I'm... <laughs> The, the theme song I want to use is kind of a parody of another song, and we don't know, will that get it yanked, because I don't know the rights to the, the song that we're parodying, and I'm not going to pay to do it, because it's just not what I do. We, let's see, Jay Peso is here, and I'm Trouble T, and hell yeah, I'm a shine, big body on my back, got my back, two honkies, yes, and we rolling a Delta 88, <laughs> what, you going to see us at the back of the studio rhyming. And the motherfucker that stole our first tapes, we're going to find your ass for bootlegging. You know what I'm saying? We got a new movie recommendation today. I forgot to do it last time. I was so involved. I was so hyped about the Freddy stuff that I actually forgot to do the movie thing. And, and I don't, I mean, I'm sorry that I did because this seems to be really well thought out. Somebody really took a lot of time on this. Our movie, I'm reading it exactly how it's done. Our movie today is Fireworms. After the sheriff of a small town, though he killed the monsters that killed six townspeople by ripping their hearts out and eating them, find it has returned looking for revenge. Now he's relay pissed and is stalking the lawmen. The sheriff should have made sure it was dead before trying to bury it. This award-winning film will make you think about saying a prayer before going to sleep at night. Fireworms, now on demand. Man, who did that write-up? I mean, whoever did that, if that's not intentional, that, somebody should probably, uh, at the very least, be, <laughs> be reprimanded, right? Your job is on the line. That is terrible. Let's get into some questions. Uh, the movie's great, though. The Fireworms, oh, man, it's so excellent. I mean, when the sheriff starts stalking, or the creature stalking the lawmen, and ripping their hearts out. He killed six townspeople. Uh, award winning film. I did not realize that. Would you rather, while running through the woods from an enraged wild boar, sprain your ankle severely or accidentally step into an old metal bucket and not be able to shake it off as you run? I think I'm going to take the metal bucket. The metal bucket, at least, uh, I'm still able to run. It's just a bucket on my foot. And here's the thing. Uh, when the boar eventually catches me, which is most likely what will happen uh, with either one of these scenarios, I will use the metal bucket to just start kicking the shit out of it or put it like in its mouth area while I figure out what I'm going to do. As the boar's jaws probably crush the bucket and my ankle, and I go, oh, this was a terrible idea. I shouldn't have given up my ankle. I should have maybe at least tried to keep running. Or, or do something, maybe kick in the boar. Uh, the metal bucket, I'm taking the metal bucket because at least it's a weapon. The boar is going to catch you. Uh, you know, maybe you've outran a boar. I don't know. I think it's going to catch you. 
Would you rather save all your photo albums from a house fire or save the family dog? Dude, that's a good one, man. That's a tough one. Uh, everyone's going to say the dog, uh, right? Because, but this is the thing, and this is heartless. How old is the dog, man? The dog's going to live 10, 15 years. All your, your memories, your photos are gone, and the dog's gone. You, you got to really think long term here. Uh, I'm going to think long term here, and this is, seems pretty calloused, but it's not because the dog is going to die. And that's not a case, and that sounds like a case for not rescuing people out of building. Oh, they're going to die at some point. Why are we rescuing people? But that's not quite this. If it's a person, I'll, I'll save the person. It's, it's the dog. I know it sucks, man. It seems heartless, but all of your photo albums, your entire photo albums, your entire history, gone. And in 10 years, the dog's gone, and now you've got neither. And... Uh, I think people may go, well, why did you save the dog? Now the dog's gone. It's like you're saving the temporary thing. Uh, and then your photo albums, you just give them to your, you know. I always said that. Two years down the line, two years. Two generations down the line, somebody's going to dump all of your cherished photos into a trash can. Some fucking, someone down your bloodline, some teenagers left, or somebody doesn't really give a shit, and they're like, ah, this is taking up space, and they dump them. So... Who knows? Uh, it sounds crazy, and I feel like in the moment of truth, I would probably rescue the dog because I'm just—I feel like that's where my heart's at. But mentally, my my game plan mentally is to save the the photo albums, uh, you know, and just say, "Hey, man, it, what happened is supposed to happen." Uh, I'm really sorry. I, that that seems crazy though, but it also seems crazy to let your entire photo albums because it's not like your PlayStation. What would you save your, you know? Your, your PlayStation, your cameras, like even my notebooks. Dude, I would go and save all of my notebooks, all of my writing, all of my raps, everything I've done, my computer, my whole discography before I would save the family dog, man. That's just the way it is. I, I would be lying if I said that I wouldn't, but, I, but and that's me saying it mentally, but I think in my heart I, I would probably get the dog, and I'd be really bummed that I'd lost all my music. Uh, that's just photo albums. Mentally, I'm saying photo albums, my heart is saying dog, but I am choosing photo albums. Was that confusing? That seemed pretty, pretty straightforward, didn't it? Would you rather live in a world where underoos were standard business attire or where rabbi and professional bowler was one job? What does that mean? So there's a, rabbis and professional bowlers are the same thing. You do a freaking, what do they do? I don't know a lot about Jewish culture. Is shivas and bar mitzvahs, is that a thing? You go and you do those and then you hit your other job as a professional bowler and you're still in the in the garb. You know what? I kind of like living in a world where underoos are standard business attire because that's really going to, I think, going to swing the pendulum back from the fat acceptance movement, which I have no issue with. I do have an issue with the fat celebration movement. Anything, I mean, it's kind of weird though. I've heard people talk about this before and I get that point and I think I like it. Acceptance, yes. Most things. I'm going to say 99.9% of things. We can have acceptance. We can't have celebration in a sense of this thing over the other. We're not going to celebrate fat over skinny, I don't think. We can have acceptance of both. But I think uh, that was a weird that was a weird uh, stance to take on the underoos thing. I'm, I'm taking the long way home to say, if we live in a world where underoos are standard business attire, I think people are going to step their their fitness game up, and I would love to see it. I would really like to see it. Would you rather live in a world where the dominant milieu for social interaction was not the bar scene? but rather intense games of dodgeball. I like that. You, instead of going to bars, you would meet up for an intense game of dodgeball. You give me that number, I'm fucking whizzing them at you. I'm whizzing them at you. I'm <laughs> this, is, this is legal physical violence against you. I can't get that number. Uh, or, where humans sniffed each other like dogs. I like that one too. I think that would be funny. Uh, that'd be a funny thing just to do in general. Go and sniff someone's ass like a dog. Mm, what's that? But I like the, uh, I kind of want to just see, I think I don't want to change it back, the social interaction as a uh, rather intense game of dodgeball. 
uh, sniffing each other like dogs would get old. And there's just some asses that I don't want to sniff, right? I mean, this almost sounds like mandatory ass sniffing, and I am not down with that. Would you rather live in the Star Trek universe or the world of Dr. Seuss? Dr. Seuss animals seem cool. Aren't they all racist? That's what I heard. All Dr. Seuss cartoons are racist. That is a fact. These characters are in racist in real life. They live. They exist. We don't want to be around that. Let's go into the Star Trek universe where we're not racist, but we're, we're still for some reason all trying to kill each other interplanetarily. Is that right? Did I use that right? I'll take the Star Trek universe. That seems pretty cool. Dr. Seuss seems cool. A lot of those creatures aren't as friendly as you would think. I think they're just made to look friendly for the book. I think a Dr. Seuss character would probably rip your head off. I don't really think. And it's racist, so I guess it depends. And they don't, they're a bunch of different colors, too. So, I mean, you're white. I'm white. It might be the minority there. I don't know what you are. Would you rather live in... <laughs> Would you rather live in a salvage? You'd be in trouble. I think you would be in, in trouble no matter what. Would you rather live in a Salvador Dali landscape or, or Tolkien's Middle Earth? I don't know a ton about either of those, so I'm going to go ahead and take Salvador Dali landscape because I like that name. Would you rather live in Biblical Palestine or the world of Atari's Berserk? Is there really a difference? Okay, we're going to take a quick, quick break from our sponsor, and we'll be back. I fell asleep in the library. I was in there studying paradoxes late into the night, more specifically indoor ornithology, and nobody even noticed. I fucked. Bacon-scented mustache for guys who fuck. I'm going to start... <sighs> Let me shake it off. Okay, these questions are out of the book. 2000 Would You Rather Play With Yourself at Home or in Biblical Palestine, wherever you are, or Berserk, Atari's Berserk. Would you rather caramel or mocha frappuccino? I don't uh, drink any of that type of shit, so go ahead and give me the, give me the caramel or the car caramel. Caramel or caramel. It's the great debate that's raging, it's dividing the nation. Is it caramel or caramel? We don't no. So I guess I'll find out when I order the Frappuccino. Would you rather pet sit or babysit? Definitely pet sit, man. Look, your kid is your kid. You think it's awesome. You think your kid's more awesome than everyone else does. I guarantee it. Uh, and as much as I like to see all of the children in small increments, I do not want to be around them for an extended period of time, especially alone with the child. So I will go ahead and pet sit. I would rather pet sit. Uh, there's, I'm trying to think of a pet that I wouldn't rather pet sit over a baby. Uh, and I, I can't really think of one. I guess it would have to be something that could potentially kill me. Uh, I, I do not want to babysit. Uh, and that's it. I just don't want to babysit. I'll take pet sit. Bacon scented mustache for guys who fuck. Uh, I mean, I seriously wasn't trying to be rude. I really don't know what you are. Uh, and I did not mean racially. I just meant species wise. Hi and welcome back. <laughs> I like doing that. It feels corny as shit. Would you rather name your child Adolf or Fartsy? kid's gonna roll with fartsy even though I said don't name your kid crazy shit because they're gonna get picked on I think Adolf and fartsy a fartsy I think though that's a lot cooler uh, destruct would you rather name your child destruction personified or 43 so you're just gonna call your kid 43 destruction personified is badass I actually might go down and change my name to that tomorrow I've got the time let me see what I'm doing there what are, what are you what do we got going on would you rather have a turtle shell or crab claws? Man, both of those would get annoying. Turtle shell, if you fall on your back, you can't get up. Crab claws, you're going to have a hard time finger banging, and I'm so good at it. So, <laughs> uh, uh, man, it's such a huge loss. If I had crab claws, it's such a huge loss in the finger banging community, not only to me, but to all the lucky ladies and their bee holes. Give me the crab claws though, because turtle shell, I feel like uh, it's too problematic. Can't get in the car. Uh, where, where is your dick at? Uh, 
in relation to the turtle shell. Crab claw is probably done jerking off. Uh, I could find a way. I'll find a way. I'll go back to dry humping. I'll dry hump your entire fucking <laughs> ottoman. Your let's see. I'll, I'll dry hump your entire living room. I don't give a fuck. Okay, we're back. More frustration. It's crazy. I guess phantom files and I don't know, man. It, it's just yeah. Every week I think you're, I think you're doing it. Eventually, you want to catch one of my epic freakouts. You want to see me go batshit on camera. I get it. That's what it feels like. I don't know, man. It just seems like something as simple as this. We're not even doing this for like. You know, shouldn't be any pressure, it's fun, and it's for some reason it's starting to become stressful, which means I'm probably going to quit it pretty soon, but I'm going to continue. I'm going to fight through, because I, I want to do it. I'm having fun, I want to do the questions, people writing the questions, but we've got to get on on the same page, man. This is crazy. Every week it's something in this motherfucker. Would you rather swim in freezing water or in a warm swimming pool where lots of children have been peeing. Fresh urine is cleaner than both spit and skin because healthy urine does not have bacteria in it. So there's something to consider. Go ahead and drink it down. Drink a fresh, drink a whole pool of, of children's urine. I, used to, I never thought about that back in the day. I said this, the swimming pool thing, the, the wave pool, nobody's getting out. All those people in there and, and you're telling me they never have to piss? I would rather swim in the in the piss pool than the, than in freezing water. Freezing water is a health risk, hypothermia. Give me the the freezing man. Swimming in a pool where lots of children have been pissing, I'm just gonna piss in it. And I've always said, as long as I'm sharing in the pissing process, I got no problem swimming in a piss pool. That wouldn't bother me at all. Whew, Phantom files, they got us again, and it's every time. Bad omen. I don't know, man. I'm really, it's we're in a learning process. We're still in the growth phase here, uh, but I am closer to the end than the beginning. I say that in everything, a lot of things. That's true, and I'm not going to go off on the tangent, but it's made me think about a lot of things. Rap, I've got the plan. 2026, I think that's a good 15 year from the CD. I mean, it's even more. 25 year tapes, everything included. I have a plan of what I want to do there. That That's there. I really feel like social media as Instagram dies. And I guess TikTok's picking up. I'm not going to do TikTok. I just feel like at my age, I, I'm not going to chase the kids there. I didn't even really want to do Instagram or Facebook. And then I, I quit Twitter. That was great. If Instagram dies, I, I will, my social media presence will die with it. And this is closer to the end, maybe, if we don't figure some shit out. You've been given the opportunity to go back in time. You can either stop the Titanic from sinking or guarantee that your grandfather acquires great wealth and power, which will be passed down to you through the generations. Which do you choose? What, what really is the benefit of stopping the Titanic from sinking? I mean, saving those lives, and I'm saying long term. Okay, you stopped the Titanic from sinking that day. One thing we know, and I always say this about people, you can change things, kind of like the butterfly effect, right? You can go back and change things, and there's no guarantee that that's going to make things better, though. It could ultimately make things worse. Uh, if I guarantee my grandfather acquires great wealth and power that he passes to me, that could make things worse. But I think I would rather find out that <laughs> than what would. I would rather find that out. Give Grandpa his. He's going to pass it down. Stopping the Titanic from sinking for a day really means fuck all in the grand scheme of things. Uh, all that means is it could sink the next time out. Oh, okay, you did a great thing. Now your family doesn't have the wealth and the power. You know, I'd rather just do that. Uh, let let Grandpa sink. Maybe he gets it and he, he sinks or he... That's another bad thing. That's a bad way to think. Maybe he gets it and he abuses it. It says he's going to pass it down. It doesn't say he's going to fuck it off, so... I'll go ahead and do that. <clears throat> Would you rather <laughs> have Angelina Jolie's lips or Jennifer Aniston's hair? Dude, how crazy would I look with either one? My lips are pretty good. I, I'm going to take... 
Jennifer Aniston's hair. Not because, obviously, I've, we've gone over this before. I'm not unhappy with my hair. But I, I feel like my lips are pretty good. I'm pretty happy with my lips. Uh, they're the product of prolonged breastfeeding. Uh, we've been over this. It actually, if you breastfeed your child too long, they will get big lips. I am proof. Uh, 10 hours a day until I was 15. <laughs> 10 hours a day until I was 15. Uh, give you some, give you these puckers, baby. Yeah, give me Jennifer Aniston's hair. I, I feel like my lips are, are so close to Jolie's that there wouldn't really even be that much of a difference. Would you rather have your arms randomly fall off or your hair fall off whenever you get scared? Okay, so the arms are falling off ra at random points no matter what. Your hair falls off whenever you get scared. Uh, yeah, uh, I'll take that. I'm going to take, I don't want my arms to randomly fall off. What if I'm holding someone's baby? You know what I mean? <laughs> there, there's so many situations, which I would never be doing that. But I'm saying, what if? This is a hypothetical, right? So hypothetically, I would hold someone's baby and my arms would fall off. And I'm like, oh, what do you want me to do? Can you get sued for that if your arms fall off? I don't know. I'm not going to find out because I'm going to have my hair fall off whenever I get scared. And I'm just going to shave my head. And then no one will know when I'm scared because it's always missing. Okay, we've got a few of the, no, I do not know how to play or I refuse to play, would you rather? So I've got my own set of questions you're in the water oh so this is a would you rather okay see this is a setup this is a conspiracy this is a conspiracy against me you're in the water would you rather see an alligator or a shark didn't we have something like this already i think that was running across the back of of one you're in the water and you just see one of them well i'm assuming if i'm in the water and i'm seeing an alligator i'm closer to land than i am if i'm seeing a shark right so just based on the proximity to the land go ahead and give me the alligator let's see you'll be restricted to patronizing one bar for the next 12 months what's your pick you know what i actually don't have i really don't know i have since this has been sober year full year i'm out of the bar scene I wasn't that heavy into it before. I, I really don't know which bar I would choose for the next 12 months. I'm so out of the loop. Probably going to be some something corny, you know, some kind of chain restaurant bar, or maybe I'll go out in the boonies. Sometimes they got some good bars out there. You can, you know, fuck off down there without any fear of, of anything crazy happening or being reported. <laughs> if you could be cast in any reality show, which would you pick? See, I don't know a ton about reality shows either. What is Wipeout? Uh, Wipeout looks like it would be fun, even though it looks like you could you could damage yourself. Nah, nah, because I don't want to do anything that's like physically threatening like that. I think I would go on, dude. It would be so fun. To, as much as I detest, I don't like these shows, like The Real Cunts of Any Town, or really any of them, where there are all these people, especially like, well, it doesn't have to be women, but you always hear about like toxic masculinity, right? And then you see these shows where these women are on their worst behavior, and you're like, if those women just had a set of nuts between their legs, people would be saying this is toxic. We've got to get rid of this. Look at these fucking frat bro types bumping chests and always in each other's face yelling at each other but for some reason when it's women it's okay right so i'm saying that to say this i would like to be cast on one of the real cunts of any towns any one of them and i'm gonna get in there and i'm gonna cut loose and i'm gonna say because i'm gonna be like double standard my ass man if, if <laughs> i'm gonna cut loose man i'm letting it fly i'm letting it all go i'm being there practicing my insults like my roast and shit I'm going all in, man. And if anybody says anything, we're going to have the fucking finally have the conversation about, not, I don't want to say toxic femininity, that's stupid, because there, there's nothing feminine about what those women are doing. But we're going to have the conversation about why that's acceptable for them. And if you saw a bunch of dudes doing that, you would say, this is a toxic environment. Uh, but if you do it with women, it's a hit show, right? What's the most exciting sports event of the year? Dude, the only one that me and my family get together for is the Super Bowl. And it's the most watched. And the halftime show goes off. Everyone in entertainment wants to get in the halftime show. Your, your sales go through the roof. It's watched the most all over the world. I, I like the NBA Finals, but I'm going to just base off that the most exciting, the most that generates the most excitement, like factually. 
it's going to be the, the Super Bowl. Okay, I think that's it for today. I'm going to sit here and, and, you know, once again, the this the monumental feat that it's taking to restrain myself. Uh, I think I should get a Nobel Peace Prize. I really do. Uh, I've wanted to kill. I haven't in a couple years uh, so but I might tonight we'll see so until next time this is Trouble T <laughs> this is I'm Trouble T putting it down you know what I'm saying 2002 man the new millennium's coming you know what I'm saying R.I.P. Brandon Massey you know what I'm saying you need to holler at us dog you know what I'm saying <laughs>